Okay, great. Let's call the meeting to order. That's me. Um, and we'll, we'll do a roll call. All right, board member Sheree Atkins. Here. Chair Amanda Houston. Here. Board member Julia Titan. Here. Board member Suzanne Lehman. Here. Board member Tina Larry. Here. Vice Chair and Student Commissioner Katie Ward. Here. Library Director Corey Bertha. Here. And Bobby Smith, staff note taker. Let's see. And then maybe we want to get consent calendar. April 28, 24, library very rewarding. Uh, they're here and they were in the email. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the library use report. Yes. I move to accept the consent calendar. I second. Any public comments? No public comments. And then moving on to the current library management. We have many of those this time. Yeah, did you change the process? Did you say you changed the process so just way that you just have to submit stories? Yeah, so we started doing it on a couple of months ago. We started doing it on Microsoft Teams instead. And it made a huge difference because Teams is just right there. Yeah, and it's just called advocacy stories, uh, stories to share with the public. And it's just a delight because everybody actually reads them as well. And so then they remember to put things in there. It's working out really well. Excellent. That's great. So did they also put in things when people come and say, I'm not so happy with things? Or is it really just for the, the happy stories? So that one is for the happy stories. Mm -hmm. And then we have one called the no list, which is when somebody, we have to tell somebody, no, we don't have that service. And that way we can track to see if there's something we should be offering that we're not offering. Um, but if somebody's very unhappy, which honestly doesn't happen very often, they give them my business cards. So, and then I track those ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving to reports, library foundation report. No meeting until June. Library director's report. Sorry. Library director's report. All right. So, uh, really talking about the month of April so far, um, and then a little bit in May. Uh, staff continued with uh, teaching technology classes at the Shehalem Senior Center, and Bobby Hernandez has been doing that along with Audrey Smith. Um, things like how to use copy and paste, um, how to get files off the thumb drive into a computer. Um, these are the kinds of things that uh, they're helping people with. We also now have tech help appointments. So if there's a question that people have that might take maybe longer than 15 minutes, then um, they can schedule an appointment. They can say when they would like to come in and then we match that with a staff who's available at the time. And uh, I mean, I think mostly it's things like how do I use Libby on my mm -hmm. device or, you know, just, or I'm trying to set up my iPad or, you know, really pretty basic things like that. So there's always the option if they're asking something that is in no way library related and we don't have the skills for, we can always say, you know, I'm sorry, that's not something we're able to help you with. So uh, we've had maybe just, I think three of those so far. So not very many, but the people who have used it have been really happy with it. So, so there's those. Uh, we also help quite a bit at the information desk with people applying for jobs. So figuring out how to send in their job applications is a big thing that we help people with. Um, and some people we help are not even familiar with how to use a mouse. So the skills vary quite a bit with those that we're helping. Um, story times have continued as of next week. We're on story time break for a couple of weeks. Uh, during this time, all of our children's staff visit 
all of the elementary schools, public and private in Newburgh, Dundee, and St. Paul, and talk about summer reading. We also deliver flyers to them about the summer reading program. Um, so for some schools, we do assemblies. Uh, for others, we do um, like a morning announcement. It kind of depends on what works for the school. But we have tracked and found that when we actually go to the school and the kids see us, it makes a huge difference in them coming into the library to do the summer reading program. So that along with the flyer, I think is just a, um, it really makes a huge difference in those summer reading numbers. Uh, so staff are getting ready for that. Our Lego club has continued. It's super fun to see what kids are building. If you go over to the children's desk behind the desk, you can see all of the Lego creations for the month. And then before the next Lego builders, we take all of that down and break it apart and then they can start again. Uh, we have a new program called Young Teen Tuesday, and that's providing an opportunity for tweens to volunteer at the library during a supervised program to build job skills and responsibility. Um, Audrey Smith has been working with Amanda Lamb and Ruth Headley on that. I think it's such a great opportunity. Uh, the kids have been doing great work. They're uh, a really fun group of people, and it's neat to see them getting started. Um, they're too young to actually volunteer at the library, but this is a way to get them interested in it. And we also have many middle schoolers who um, need volunteer or want volunteer hours uh, for things like Honor Club and all of that. So that's been working out great. Is that Fourteen. Yeah. Um, and that's true for our adults too, because we have some adults who aren't able to do that. So they might come in with a caregiver and volunteer together with that person. Um, it's just that the library doesn't have staff to be able to supervise somebody one on one. Uh, let's see, April, we celebrated Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros, Day of the Child, Day of the Book. And there were food and crafts and stories for all ages. Um, we had many staff attending the Library Association Conference. I think that was after we saw you last time. Yeah. So staff presented, staff went. It was great. It's always really fun, really exhausting. <laughs> it's a lot of it's a lot of, it's a lot of driving. It's a lot of uh, peopling, but it was good. Everybody came back with things that they were excited to learn. So, and tomorrow we're having our monthly staff meeting, and staff are going to share about some of the things they learned at that time. So, excited about that. And then staff is working really hard on summer reading program, and I have more about that for you all later. That's it. In the library time report. Library friends, I'll see, I'll just say that they had uh, $1,472 in profit for April, uh, which is a pretty average month for them. And that's for sales online as well as lobby sales too. Um, and they just uh, continue to bring in money to fund stuff for the library. So they're still talking about what they're doing for their Christmas um sales and they're setting up a time to craft together so it's pretty great that's it before we move on does anyone have any questions okay no unfinished business and then we'll move on to new business all right so for the resource of the month i have a packet in there for you about the summer reading program so as you probably know, we have a summer reading program for all ages, and that means babies up to grownups. Um, the first thing in your package, the little one, is um, from um, Ruth for the teen summer reading program. So this is just one of the bingo sheets. The theme this year is Read, Renew, Repeat. So our theme is chosen uh, nationwide. So it's our summer reading program that we buy into, or I should say the state of Oregon buys into. And then um, as a service to libraries, we get to use the clip art, clip art. Oh my gosh. Wow. 
I was just looking at all of the historical stuff for the library. I'm going to blame it on that. <laughs> yeah. See, see, you're not dating yourself. Do you know what Cobra is? Like in theory. theory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. It's just on all my Snapchat sites. Oh. My Snapchat says use clip art. So pictures that you look up and like, a bit yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I started creating summer reading flyers, I would literally clip out yeah. and paste it on and then, literally, yeah. and then copy it. And then if you didn't tape down all of the edges, you would get a little black line around it. So you had to tape down the edges really well. Yeah. So I had my 24th library anniversary last Saturday. Um, so it's been a while. Uh, so getting back to this, uh, read, renew, repeat. Um, this is uh, this is Ruth's summer reading program for this year. She makes things really nice and easy for the teens. Um, basically, she knows if she's going to engage them, it's going to have to be something they can do pretty quickly. Uh, she keeps things nice and simple. She bought these, I keep calling them scratch and sniff. There's no sniffing. Um, these scratch, scratch off stickers, which I think is absolutely adorable. I think people are going to love them this year. So she has a teen volunteer who's had a lot of fun sticking those on. So um, that I think that's a fun little something different for this year. So what's on the new uh, so other, th we'll scratch it off. I can tell you, give me two <laughs> seconds. <laughs> other activities. Read a sci-fi book and be full. <laughs> I don't have an actual key, so I'm going to get keychain. This is not working. Uh, a book with a green, read a book with a green cover. There we go. Find yeah. the book with the green cover. That's what I'm yeah. So the way the teen program works is you do three in a row. You get to turn in the completed sheet upstairs. You get a small prize out of a box. And then your entry goes in the drawing for a bigger prize at the end of the summer. And it's repeat as much as you want until August 10th. So um, great idea. It is very it is. fun. Uh, the next one is Jessica's adult summer reading program, Jessica Otto, that she's put together. Uh, so what she has done is you can do really as much or little as you want. So you get a ticket, a drawing entry ticket for each box that you complete. So you could just choose to read and mark all of these off. Or you could choose to say, I'm going to do this by for every book that I finish and then read a nonfiction book, read a book set in Oregon. So you can do both. You can do one. You can do a mix of both. Um, she's tried to give people a lot of freedom in how they want to participate. Uh, we know that while kids have a lot of time to read during the summer, adults might not have as much during the summer with the kids home too, so... Um, she tries to make it a flexible thing that anyone can do. You also can earn a drawing entry for every adult program uh, that is attended, and there's 15 opportunities for drawing. The first event that we're having is author Bethany Lee, who is an Oregon poet um, and has just uh, written and published a memoir of uh, taking a sailing down from the Oregon, I think it was out of not sure if it was out of Astoria. It was out of Astoria because we were there. Out of Astoria and then down to Mexico when her kids were middle schoolers. So um, looking forward to reading that. It just actually came out yesterday. Um, and then, of course, book clubs, chess clubs, and craft connections. Uh, Jessica has also done a lot of book lists. So you can scan the QR code and pull up a book list for ideas of what to read. Yeah, she's just got tons of things in here. Um, complete a list for a ticket, for a drawing ticket. So, um, and then there's a little survey on the back as well. Someone asks, what are three books that you had to remove over the summer? Does that mean reread? 
So renew would be, um, so when you're, you check out your book for three weeks. Oh, yeah. That's the renew. Renew in the library. Yes. But that is good feedback. The, I, my mind was on the yeah. reuse, recycle, the reuse, yeah. the reuse. And I was like, okay, hey, you like reuse or you like. But yes, in terms of the library, that totally makes sense. In fact, my brain is more on that, the, the ride right. of where it comes from. But we, we might be able to say something that makes it a little bit more explicit or a little bit clearer too. So, yeah. It's really good for us to have people who don't work in the library reading over these things and asking questions, because sometimes we're so used to our library jargon that we forget that most people don't talk like us. <laughs> so thank you. But what does it mean again? <laughs> so what does repeated mean? Repeat. What are three things you have repeated over the summer? So I would say, well, first of all, I would say However you want to interpret that is free for you to interpret. The same thing with renew. However you want to re interpret that, you, you're welcome to do. Like, I don't know. I would say tea. I drink a lot of tea. I repeated that this summer. Okay. Yeah. I kind of thought renew was like you reread a book you read before. See, I think that would fall more under repeat. But if you wanted to do it that way, that's the other thing. Jessica is not going to come and hunt people down and be like, uh, no. This is not the right answer. <laughs> you did this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I actually have one more to tell you about right. first. No problem. It's the children's. So we have a different reading log for elementary, which is K through five, and a different one for babies and toddlers, or we call it baby taught and pre-K. So the first summer reading one you'll see um, is their very first log. So we consider people finishing the summer reading program if they are able to complete one log. But we also know we have some readers and maybe their parents who prefer their kids to keep going all summer long. And for some kids, the first log might take them all summer long and that's fine too. So for kids who are reading a little bit more, want some more activities, we have a second log and they can actually get as many of the second logs as they want during the summer and just keep going. So um, we've done things a lot of different ways in the past. The reading reading 20 minutes uh, seems to be uh, one that people are really happy with also because the schools are encouraging kids to read 20 minutes a day too. So anything we can do to build on that and keep kids going in a way that they're used to reading uh, during the summer, I think benefits everyone. Isn't it so cute? And the little turtle mascot this year, I think it's just adorable. Turbo is the name of our mascot this year. Turbo the Turtle. Turbo the turtle. Is that him right there? That is him right there. Oh. Our uh, baby taught in pre-K, we focus on uh, talk, sing, read, write, play. Those are uh, the core building blocks for getting kids ready to read and write once they get to school. So those are the ones we focus on in story times. Those are the ones we focus on for the summer reading program. Uh, so it makes sense that it looks pretty different for the pre-readers. And then on the back, there is a very long list of library programs for kids. There is a ton going on. One thing I wanted to draw your attention to, especially, was the public works flyer that just came out today. I put it on the back of your packet there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So very fun. If you if you want to volunteer, Katie, if you want to come back, welcome. you're welcome to do that. We are always um, in need of volunteers for that day. So it's very loud, though. If you don't want to listen to horns beeping, then maybe. Maybe it would not be I'm not I'm not over that day. Oh, you're not. Well, fine. Uh, speaking of June, though, just a note that the library is closed on uh, June 19th for Juneteenth, and that's a Wednesday. 
All right, there we go. Any questions about summer reading? Is this in a, a packet like this or is this just in a packet for us? That's just in a packet for you. Okay. Yeah. I think this is super. Everyone should really be proud of this stuff. You know, they are really stellar. We, we, I, 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 we've got a great staff. I am very proud of them. And then of our, all, all these materials available at the desk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you go to the, like, if you're at the children's desk, you can also pick up an adult summer reading program and all of that. Cause we know for adults, sometimes it's hard to get upstairs when you have little ones as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. <laughs> The adult one. Um, so I, I'm not the adult one. But I think it's in the folding. It's in the back of that. Just it's in the back of that. It's, it's that little book right there. Oh, you're right, though. It doesn't have a, your name. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to try again. They're not seeing anything. Oh, your name is at the, that that is a hard one. It's in the on the very front. Oh, mm -hmm. I do see that. That makes sense. See, I'm used to looking for the teen one where it's like three different things you need to fill out, like your name, your email, and your like grades. Yes. Yeah, you know, she's showing an adult. No, well, it is interesting. That also, so surprises for the other. Well, that's what I'm wondering is how. Yeah, are there going to be tickets like there were last year where every time oh you you're right that's off, why mm -hmm. oh yes we, we just fill our name you in. fill it out so this is actually not something you turn in thank you very much yes i can't do the summer reading program but i do a, i do build a staff summer reading program so i'm excited about that um yeah, you'll have they have little tickets to fill out. Some people I saw last year for the adult program actually did uh, uh labels, like printed off a sheet of labels so they could just stick those on instead since there were so many of them. Well, after the first, I don't know, five or six I did, I just stopped bothering because it was like, okay, if I need something, I can't, I don't really care anyway. So it was like, <laughs> okay, I've done it, but I'm not gonna end, I'm not gonna keep entering. So. Yeah. <laughs> And then the survey report. Survey report. I've got a nice big packet for you. On um, the customer service survey. Uh, so this is something that we have done at the library in the past, but it's now um, also a customer service goal for the city of Newburgh. Uh, so the as you can see in the first paragraph, we received 4,209 entries. 188 were actual viable people. So they learned some great things during the survey. I tried to, my first thought was not having um, email addresses on there, not requiring email addresses uh, so that people could answer anonymously if they wanted to. Uh, but that meant that uh, we got spammed a lot. So uh, learn some things about that. Uh, we did offer the we did offer paper copies as well as online, um, and we made sure that the fonts were nice and big uh, for both of those as well. Um, did you all have a chance to look at these already? Yeah. So the survey results overall were fantastic, um, and it was nice to learn what we need to focus on too. There's uh, some things that people just didn't know existed. Yeah, so, right. so, so mm -hmm. what is that? Ooh, oh, I don't have my phone with me. See, this is this is I have my phone. so if you if you go to the app store, you okay. can download load the Newberg library self-check okay, app. It's oh, different. It's different than the CCRL. Yes. Okay. I wish it could all be in one app. That's but of wild. course <laughs> that would not be. Um, but the way it works, it's the second one from the top. So it's this one right here. Oh, so it looks like Newberg. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll look for that. So the, the great thing is that you're able to scan the barcode. Mm -hmm. And then, sorry. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's. So you could just have your picture books and you could just scan all of the barcodes. And then by the time you walked out the door, it won't set it off because it's connected with the system. Okay. So cool. Yeah. Okay. 
it's yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 Yeah, even easier than self-check. The only thing, there are some things I don't like about it. You can only have one barcode on it. So if I'm trying to check out items for my son that he's placed on hold, then I, then I can't check them out that way. Right. I have to go the other way. CCRLS app, you can have the barcode for multiple things yeah. for at self-check. Yes. So if, yeah, yeah. If I checked it out for my husband or me, I can yeah. switch them. Mm -hmm. okay yeah so we have uh fe fe technology is the company that does our uh security at the doors so when somebody goes through the doors with an item that hasn't been checked out almost always it's an accident um then the circulation sees the title of the book that wasn't checked out and they can say oh it's this book right here let's just get that one checked out for you um but that is not a ccrls wide technology that's used. It's just something that we have at our library, which means our self-check app is something that we can have at our library, but it isn't part of CCRLS as a whole. That's why it's not on the app. Um, any questions for me about the customer service survey report? I just congratulate you and your entire staff. Absolutely. Thank you. So it's actually going to be uh, twice a year. So we'll do another one in September after summer reading, and that will be more summer reading and program focused. Also, because of our summer reading grants, there's uh, some specific questions we need to ask, but we'll still keep it nice and short, just like we kept this one too. I don't think we should give anyone a survey that takes more than five minutes to fill out. And I think we should always offer a prize. Mm -hmm. Um, was there any right. feedback that was poignant that you thought, oh, this is really helpful to us? There were some, there were some really, there were a lot of, we love our library, you know, really sweet like that. And then there was um, one person that I remember who had said, um, that she's a George Fox student and she's been so excited to be able to find the books that she needs here at the library and has told her friends about it and comes in and uses the library quite a bit. So, and there were people who talked about using cultural passes and other things like that too. So, yeah. Yep. All right. Sorry, if a student at Dwarf Fox, are they allowed for um, library card because they're kind of like a resident. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. So what they do is they, they have to bring in their proof of living on campus. So if they live off campus, then they still have to be, well, it's easier now with Dundee and rural Newburgh being in the there too, but it would, before it was, they had to live in city limits. So now they need to be in our service area still in order to get a card. And sometimes students will have a library card from a someplace else in the CCRLS area, which is nice because then they can just use that card. We just have to make sure that uh, when they're placing their holes that they switch it to pick it up in Newburgh instead of wherever they have their card registered. So, yeah. Uh, strategic plan. Strategic plan. All right. Let me get out my big notebook here. So on this one, I feel like we've completed a few things. So I want your feedback so I can actually mark it as completed if you feel that way too. Uh, so we're gonna start with objective B. And that one is Align physical and digital resources to ensure the library is reaching its service community in both its physical and virtual spaces. So um, B goal B1 is leverage current marketing and engagement platforms, social media, e-newsletter, print pieces, et cetera, to raise awareness, increase reach of marketing and engagement tools, develop and incorporate assessments and surveys into these tools, continue to support staff participation in local community groups and events. So when I'm looking through that, I feel like we're hitting all of those marks. Um, certainly the survey that we just finished shows that uh, we have an e-newsletter that reaches, um, I think, 
1,400 people now. So it's got a great reach. It actually has a really good readership as well. We can see how many people open that. I think it's around 40%, which is really high for an e-newsletter. Um, let's see, uh, we have a lot of staff participation in local community groups and events, especially with our uh, focus on outreach right now too. We've been able to um, reach just a ton of different groups. We went to a community baby shower recently. Uh, so we're really involved in the community in a lot of different ways for that. Uh, B2 is create a collection development plan to reflect increased remote usage of resources. Um, so this one is interesting because all of this uh, started, the strategic plan was written in 2020. So there was quite a few things that were remote and not as many things now. Um, however, we do continue, I am continuing to monitor this monitor the statistics uh, for ebooks and e-audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And for this next budget year, my proposal is to actually move, we're not getting an increase in budget. So instead I was moving some budget numbers around. So taking some money from children's, taking some money from adult services um, or adult collection development and moving four thousand dollars into ebooks and e e-audiobooks, which doubles what was in there before. So instead of $4,270, it will be $8,270. So Good evening. The library of you closing in about 30 minutes. If you would like to sign up for a library card today, please fill out an application at the circulation desk in the next 15 minutes. Thank you. Um, so... Uh, I feel in that way that we've uh, addressed those, those issues and concerns as well. And then B3 is design a pilot program to increase access to technology for patrons outside the library. So we've done a couple of things that I think um, really meet this need. So one is since we're doing um, technology classes at the senior center, um, this is one of those ways that we really focus on outreach to people. Um, and then also we're doing our homebound services now. So we are taking books to out into the community. So we're delivering those to people who aren't able to get into the library. And because we're all trained now, we're also, um, uh, we're also seeing if maybe they would benefit uh, from the talking books and braille library instead. So we're able to make those assessments and we're going out to, we've done a lot of people who we've helped a lot of people who are in uh, retirement centers with individuals. When we're going out, uh, we're making sure that two staff are going at a time because um, I don't want to ever send just one person out to a home that hasn't been assessed yet. Um, especially when we're sitting down and having a conversation with someone as well. So, um, so there'll be a conversation where we fill out a, a library card application and then um, assess whether talking books and braille is better or our outreach is better for the person and then see what kinds of materials they like um, and see if they wanna place their own holds or if they want us to uh, pick items for them instead, so. Do you have any limitations on those? Meals? Yes, we do. Because this, they already go out. They are so like, that's calls. our target audience, right? <laughs> okay. So the person that um, Audrey and Tiffany are visiting actually called us because of the flyer we sent with Meals on Wheels. So I'm hoping for more from that as well. But um, I love working with Sarah Larison at the Senior Center. She's just an absolute delight. Uh, she's a longtime library patron as well, and uh, she was so excited to be able to work with us because uh, we 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 serve the same people, right? So, yes, Neil's on wheels has been great. That's a great partnership. Yeah. Um, so I would like to mark objective B as complete. If you are all okay with that, most definitely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right, and then we already said objective C was complete. So we are on to objective D. 
Objective D, the library will become a welcoming and accessible space that reflects the cultural diversity of the community it serves. Goals D1, diversify the library's collection and programming to reflect community demographics. I feel like we, um, so I don't want to say we've done that because it makes it sound like we're done. <laughs> so we are continually doing that, I would say. That's always going to be a work in progress. Um, but I feel like with our uh, Latino services librarian, Bobby Hernandez, I feel like uh, we are really reaching out to community in a lot of different ways. Uh, support city initiatives related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we've done that in um, all the ways we've done that. Um, and again, these are things that we're, we're doing and we continue to do when it's not like these are ever done, done. Uh, develop a policy procedure that allows equitable access to the Braille Buddy printer service and identify the market, the service, and identify and market the serious service to community members or groups that would most benefit from this service. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit before, um, but what we found with um, the Braille collection was that it was, people were just really not interested in it. And we decided instead to pivot to doing, uh, having the talking Braille, talking book and Braille library from the state library come and train us. And uh, they really have so many more resources that are so much better that are delivered directly to homes. Um, so in that way, uh, that's how we've pivoted that service. And I think it's something that's gonna serve people really well. Conduct, ac conduct accessibility audits of the library's physical and virtual spaces. So a few months ago when we had accessibility training, uh, before we did that, uh, Roy and Kathleen Gabbercole came to the library and we walked around and talked about things that needed to be changed. Uh, one of the biggest things that needed to be changed is um, should there be any kind of a fire and the elevator is recalled to downstairs, I do not have a way for a person in a wheelchair to exit the upstairs. So there's steps leading out both ways. So um, this summer, there is a plan for Public Works to um, take out the retaining wall on the north side that faces the Cultural Center and uh, pour a concrete pad um, that will be ADA compliant. So it has to, uh, there's a certain grade for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then um, people will be able to, they'll make a, a path so people are able to get out. Um, you know, one of the things that we had talked about, and I had been told before too, was if if you need to help somebody out, then you know ask if you are able to help them, and then staff can both lift up the chair and get that down. And when Roy was there, we just kind of looked at each other and went, "That doesn't work." Like if you have somebody in an electric wheelchair, that is exceptionally heavy, and there is no way that is going to work. Uh, so Roy has also done some other work with the city as well. So I reached out to city manager and public works and said, hey, this is something that is not safe and needs to get changed. So that's on the schedule. Um, and then as far as virtual spaces goes, uh, we're getting, thank goodness, a new website soon. Um, I'm not sure when this summer it's going to be released, but it will be released this summer. And so they've taken a real look at accessibility for the website as well. So. And that way, I feel like we've hit uh, objective D all through the one, two, three, and four. And like I said, those are things that we continue to work on as well. So I'd like to mark that complete as well, if that's okay. Yeah, yes. okay. Okay, and then what I have left to do leaves me with a... So while we've addressed A1, which is have the glass atrium and supporting wall evaluated by a professional architectural specialist with the end goal to repair the persistent long-term water issues using a qualified specialized contractor. That's been done. That was put in place by Will um, and they've done as much as they can possibly do. And the next thing we're gonna have to look at is uh, some kind of cover that would actually go over the top of the windows or something else. I don't know. We'll, we'll need a professional firm to look at that. 
I would hate to let go of all of the beautiful light that comes in from the windows. So if we can possibly keep that in place, that's what we're going to do. Um, I think it's something that people really love about our library too. So, um, and it still leaks sometimes and it won't get better until we do something different. So there's that piece of it. Um, the next one is design and implement a permanent solution to the flash flooding issue at the amphitheater doors in the children's area. Um, while this has not been a problem for a while now, I do think it does need to be addressed. Um, and part of that is uh, that's going to need some city funding to get fixed. And Nobody. there's no money for that right now. So um, I'm not sure if I will be able to finish out objective A. Um, and the other one is evaluate the amphitheater and building entrance for future improvements to increase building accessibility and safety. I would love to redo the front of the library. Um, and that's going to be a big fundraising project to be able to do that. I do think there is a way that we can make this a much more welcoming and accessible place. Um, sometimes people will come in. There was there was this man that I helped upstairs maybe six months ago, maybe a year. And he um, had a lot of trouble walking. He was using a... Um, 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 oh my gosh, words. A, a walker, a walker. And, um, he asked if there was a way out of the library, not using this stair. or he said, I can't believe you don't have a, a ramp to your library. And I said, I'm so sorry. We do have a ramp to our library. Let me show you where it is. So he had managed to get down the stairs because he couldn't see because the ramp is not very visible we have we have signage but if you're coming in from the other side you just do not see that we've got a ramp that way so um and also the brick stairs as you probably all know they are slick brick was a terrible idea for the northwest it was a terrible idea and when they get any i i see one single bit we, I mean, we've had people fall on the stairs, numerous people fall on the stairs. So um, this is something that does need to be done. I don't think this is a goal that's going to be completed in this strategic plan. So I think that will be carrying on to the next strategic plan. Um, so this strategic plan goes from 2021 to 2026. So I think we're making great progress on it. Yeah. And um, I also think Will did a really good job setting up the strategic plan. I think he he made a plan that was uh, extremely relevant. <laughs> so thanks to all of you who helped with that plan as well, because I know some of you were on the library board at that time. Um, so I think it's been really relevant. It's been great to have as a guide. Um, and I think in 2025, then we'll start working on the next strategic plan, so. Ask a clarifying question. So you yeah. said A3, probably not. You said A2, don't have the funding for it now. A3, probably not this plan. Is it A2 and A3 probably won't be accomplished in this plan period? Well, probably. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I'm certain of it because this yeah. is going to take a lot more money than we have. Yeah. Um, and I think some of that should be city funded. And when we're come when it comes to redoing the front entrance, yeah. I would I would think there would be a mix of city funds as well as fundraising as well. So ask another question mm -hmm. um the digital, digital. oh yeah the digitization of yep that's a, that's that a carryover, carryover. It, it is a carryover carryover so we have we have a scanner to use uh the city recorder was telling me that she thinks that the a different kind of scanner that they also have would actually be better to use um maybe less cumbersome. What we're running up against right now is, uh, well, not so much in, we, we have the library annex that we can have that in for people to do, but it's going to take some very trained volunteers, honestly, a long time to do it. So we do need to get started on it. Yeah, we do need to get started on it. I wonder if we can do some kind of partnership with George Fox the students that are into, you know, 
that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that they could get credit for. I know. I think one of the problems with that is like it it takes skill to be able to get a scan that is readable, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of, I mean, other than that, there's not research that they're doing as as part of it too. So I don't know, like, I'm not sure. Can I speak to absolutely the, the um, technology aspect of it? There's two things we come, we used to have to figure out oh, how, yes. how are we going to make it accessible? What kind of platform mm -hmm. so that it, it's easy to, to search and the agents to search? So we have to do just a little bit more research on that, what format we want it to be saved in. Mm -hmm. And then also because of the flooding over at City Hall, they had a different type of scanner set up and they just haven't been able to organize all that stuff over in Annex for us. Mm -hmm. So until they can show us this uh, overhead camera set up there with uh, the city recorder was talking about um, that's something we need to be able to see and be yeah. shown how to mm -hmm. use it too. So those are the well, it seems, obstacles. Yeah, right it now. seems like that's definitely a good reason why there's a whole lot. Well, and the, the other part of it too is switching over to a new website mm -hmm. where once we do that too, I feel like we'll be able to, we'll know a little bit better if we're looking at the city's website to be able to host something like that, or if we're looking for an outside source to host that and link it to on the city's website yeah, that, too. That so will be a lot of because we don't want to mm -hmm. spend years doing it and realize at the end that we have to redo it. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we will it will have keyword searching search capabilities and the so it will be much better than it is now. And also it depends on, um, well, people spelling things correctly. Is, you know, there's a lot of, it's not a perfect system. It's just better than what there currently is as well. Have you gotten any inquiries from the your graphic that is, you know, partnering with this project? Please, pull the door. I, so I still have the, I have the document that was signed that gave us permission. The graphic is under new management or, you know, new owners than it had before. True. Um, but Can I still have that piece of paper. Will be closing <laughs> in about if you still have items to check It's out, scanned. It's please online. Please do so now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's good that it's still, you know. We're still thinking of it. It's like still, it. yeah, it's still in the works. It just has taken a really long time. Oh, it's back, even thinking about it back then, we knew it was going to be huge. Yeah, it is huge. But that would be something good, too, to talk with, you know, schools about, too, whether it's people who need volunteer opportunities at George Fox or need volunteers at, from the high school. Um, Mm -hmm. And like we said, it will have to be trained on how to do it too, because right. it's not just as easy as like scanning down too. Because then you're going back to and you're making sure that all the lines are readable and exactly. all of those pieces. Otherwise, too, so exactly. yeah, exactly. So that's all the things for the strategic plan. Okay, so next meeting uh, is June 20th. There's no July meeting and then August 16th. And that's public works day. So I'm going to be, we're going to keep that meeting June 20th. short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you're already going to be exhausted. Yes. August. So we're going to do a different day. Oh my goodness. So not enough people for quorum. So I think Can I'll send out some, that so if we did a different day of the week, so I can't do, I looked at a different Thursday, but I, okay. um, actually, I wonder if I can just minimize this. Um, 
So if we're looking at a different day, just going to see when. So August 8th is the planning commission for the 15th and then well the other thing we could do is not meet in july and august and meet in december instead or okay yeah you're you're fine you're fine but yes yeah, so if we if we met december 19th then we would meet in december before suzanne's term is up on the 31st and your term who's up again yours is just... only a year <laughs> I'm so, so but you know what, you know what I saw? They actually put three years on your, um, it's, it wasn't supposed to be three years, but they put 2026 is when your term is up, which you're not going to be here for that. Um, but, but may, but maybe you don't have to re reapply. I really don't. I don't. I, yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. Just give me a <laughs> So the proposal is no meeting in July or August and then meeting in but December. But meeting in December. We vote 22nd. Why don't we vote? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And I get a motion. Okay. I motion to not meet in July and August. We're not meeting in August and then in December. Second. 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 All right. <laughs> it's not that close to Christmas. Yeah, it's far enough away. So when do we have to go through the opening of the board process? Oh, <laughs> let's end on a better note, shall we? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Happy summer. So I think that would be something good to talk about in June is what the timeline is for filling Suzanne's position. Meeting adjourned. Woo! Woo!